Good morning, and welcome to Spotlight on New York, a weekly look at issues and challenges affecting listeners in the greater New York metropolitan area. Now, here's your host, David North. This Sunday morning, many of us will be picking up the papers and combing the classifieds, looking for a new job. When you spot that opportunity, will your resume be a foot in the door, or will it shoot you in the foot? It's a serious issue. Hi, I'm David North. My guest in the spotlight this morning has useful advice and clear descriptions about composing a winning resume. He's Rusty Diversa. Rusty's a resident of Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. He's a former human resources manager for a New York City-based security firm. He's an executive recruiter and an experienced hiring manager. Unfortunately, I see many candidates who are very qualified not get jobs or be considered because of a poorly written resume. What are some of the egregious examples you might have seen in the past? Several things that come to mind that, that are really, unfortunately, showstoppers for employers are resumes that are written too long, resumes that ramble, or just really basic spelling and typographical errors, grammatical errors. These are definitely an indication of what the employer may perceive in you as poor qualities carelessness, sloppiness, inability to get to the point. Exactly. What ends up happening is many folks, in order to impress their prospective employers, tend to ramble on their resumes. And an employer really wants to see a resume that's short and concise and to the point with many results and achievements. Rusty, I've seen a few resumes come across my desk in the past, too, and sometimes it just seems to me that it's a matter of uh, subjectivity. Something might impress someone in one case and just might turn somebody else off somewhere else. How can you be empirical about what makes a good resume? Well, you really want to do your best to qualify and quantify the results of a position. For instance, I I work with uh, college grads as well as senior management and everyone in between. So, for instance, if you had a job as a manager, you want to demonstrate specific achievements and results that you've had. Even if you perform a service, you can demonstrate how you increase productivity, reduce costs, did things quicker, faster, smarter. How valuable is a chronological employment record, or should you leap ahead to what you regard as your greatest achievements? Well, employers really want to see a, what's called a chronological resume versus a functional resume. A chronological resume is just that, a chronology of what you've done, where you've done it, and the achievements you've accomplished at the respective positions. Unfortunately, a functional resume, not to say it's not used, but it makes the reader work harder to to understand your achievements and your results and where specifically you did these uh, achievements and results. I just know a lot of folks who get to be uh, a certain age or have reached a certain point in their career where they find that really hard to do in one or two pages. Well, sometimes they may need to work with a professional. A professional resume writer will help you boil down your credentials to the most important aspects of that credential within within a page or two, maximum three. Obviously, if someone's been working for 15, 20, 30 years, uh, there's going to be more information, but it can be boiled down to a few pages. Employers and executive recruiters really are looking for a snapshot of an individual's past performance to see if it merits an interview. And the truth of the matter is a resume is used as an interview tool, not a hiring tool. Uh, rarely do you hear someone say, this person has an excellent resume, hire them. And when an excellent resume is presented, That's a great tool to start an interview. That's a really interesting point. I think a lot of us, when we put our resumes together, we think we have a volume of experience that this will be a wedge in the door, this will get us in, look at all we've done. There are several myths about resumes. One of the resume myths is the employee is going to read every line. Unfortunately, the the truth of the matter is uh, if your resume is looked at at all, your resume is reviewed less than 10 seconds. So the information on your resume needs to be short, hard-hitting, and concise and to the point as to grab the hiring authority's attention as soon as possible. I've talked to folks who are a little concerned that a long resume might be a giveaway that they're old, and that's something that they're, uh, they're, they're trying to hide. That's another myth about age. Notwithstanding industries like fashion, age is really not a showstopper. The main thing that the person preparing the resume needs to understand is they need to demonstrate value to the prospective employer. From a format point of view, you want to put more information about the most recent jobs you had in the past few years, and then as you go further back in your chronology, you want to trail off the detail. So you can, in essence, really, if you've been working 15, 20 years, you can really fill two pages comfortably and putting enough information so that the reader has got a place to start. The truth of the matter is a resume is used as a conversation starter. 
and not really read line by line in the, in the interview process. So a person preparing their resume needs to understand that it needs to be bulleted, short and concise and to the point, and each bullet really needs to demonstrate an accomplishment or a result and an action in what they've done. Rusty, what of uh, the dates of employment? You might have a longer resume, and some might be going back 10 or 15 years. They might say they worked for such and such company. Is it important to put the dates there, or just that they worked in such and such company at such and such capacity? No, the dates are critical. They need to put the month and the year minimum. Years ago, it would be the actual day, date, and year, but now month and year is perfectly acceptable. Or really, sometimes you may even see resumes with just a year on it, because People tend to stay within a company within several months or maybe a year or two. But the dates are critical because the dates are used also to perform reference checks. How careful are human resources people about those reference checks now? I read and hear anecdotally that all you can get from a previous employer is that, yes, so-and-so worked here, and that's the end of it. Well, the truth of the matter is more and more companies are concerned about getting sued. So they do 